there's one last thing we need to do to secure our droplet, and that's to set up a firewall. Firewalls are really helpful because they essentially block network traffic from getting in and potentially, if you really want to, getting out of our server. Uh, this can be really important because there's a lot of uh, sort of like scripts out there that are just automatically hitting every single server that they can find and looking for vulnerabilities. And if there's anything, any server that you have on your system that's listening to a port, and uh, it, it will just be open and available for someone to use it, which could be really bad if you're not aware of that. So generally speaking, the best way to set up your firewalls is to restrict everything and then only allow in what, uh, what you really want to come in. So for example, if you have a web server, you only want uh, eight, port 80 and 443 traffic. And then maybe that, uh, that um, SSH traffic too for the management side but nothing else, like absolutely nothing else. You don't want Telnet to get in, you don't want FTP to be able to get in. Uh, that way, in case you actually install that software or something installs it uh, without your knowing, it's, uh, it's not actually gonna be able to be usable unless somebody goes in through those other ports. So there's a couple choices that we can use for creating firewalls. There is a, um, there is a, a command line firewall called UFW um, that is very good. It comes with Ubuntu and uh, and works out uh, really well. But there's also a firewall option from uh, DigitalOcean that we can use. And uh, I like this one a lot. Um, it's basically whenever I'm using a VPC, so the entire cloud, if I get the choice of using the sort of like the GUI firewall, I, I kind of tend to do that. And that's because I can create the firewall once and then apply it to all of my services, in this case, all of the droplets, all at once. And if I need to make changes, it's pretty easy to be able to do that from anywhere in the world. All right, well, let's go ahead and go through DigitalOcean to set up this firewall. We're gonna come down here to networking, and then from there, we're gonna to go to firewalls, and uh, we don't have one set up, so let's go ahead and create that. Uh, first of all, let's give this a name. So these are all going to be like, I don't know, I'm imagining that we're just hosting a bunch of blogs on this. So we're just going to say like, this is the blogs firewall. Um, maybe it's like also just like, could be web servers. Um, it doesn't really matter what this is named, as long as it's something that makes sense to you. So that way later on, you can go in like, oh, right, this is the firewall I want to associate with this droplet. Inbound rules. Okay, well, I want SSH, which is port 22, to be available from everywhere. Now, you can uh, restrict it to like essentially your own IP address um, or a range of IP addresses. For example, if you have a team of people and you want them to be able to SSH in, uh, then that's what this would set up. You can also set up firewalls so that way uh, only traffic from other you know, digital ocean droplets because just the traffic, just the IP address that that droplet has. And that could be a great way of sort of like setting up some internal servers that you can only SSH into them from something like a Bastion host or, or what, whatnot. In this case, however, we're going to allow SSH in from everywhere. Uh, and then we also want to allow HTTP, which is port 80 from everywhere and also HTTPS. Now you see when we add these rules, there's pretty much like, they have a bunch of these like, oh, um, a MySQL, like uh, for the MySQL's port if you wanna host your own database on your, your droplet. And if we do that, we'll see like that's the port that MySQL generally has. Uh, if of course you want to open up something because like maybe you're running like a Minecraft server or something like that and it needs its own port, you can do custom, in which case you can set what that port is gonna be. Uh, I do not need to do that. These are the three rules that I care about. Uh, so then we go down to outbound rules. Now, generally speaking, outbound rules is a little bit safer to leave open than inbound rules. And that's because it's our server, right? Like anything that wants to get out, we should allow them to get out. Um, that being said, there's some times when you want to restrict that too. In this case, I don't want to restrict this but I can foresee a time when you have an extremely locked down server and all you want it to be able to do is do like maybe an SSH connection to another server. 
So therefore, you're going to restrict SSH to a specific destination. And then we can apply these to a specific droplet. So we have to choose what the droplet is that we're going to go to. So uh, I actually forget what the name of this droplet is. I'm going to go ahead and create this right away. And here we can see that it's applied to zero droplets right now. Uh, what I can go is come back up to my project. I'll see, oh, look, it's this Ubuntu 01. OK, well, I'm just going to come copy that, come back down to networking, go to firewalls. We're going to edit this and go to the droplet section, add droplets, and add in Ubuntu. Now, if I didn't know the name, but I knew what like in general it was, I can just start typing. And there it is, the one droplet that I have on the system. And I will add the droplet. So firewall has been updated successfully. We can come back to our books build server. And I believe in here is information networking. Does it show? Yeah, and then here's the firewalls that is set up for it. And we can actually set up multiple firewalls uh, for a single server. So you can just set up something like a firewall for SSH, a firewall for uh, web servers, and a firewall for other things, and sort of like apply them all and mix and match uh, to your heart's content. Um, you may have also noticed in there that I could choose tags. So you can tag your servers uh, based upon what they do and then put up, apply firewalls to those tags. All different ways for you to sort of like organize what your firewalls are, what your servers are, and to make sure that they're applied the way that you really want them to be applied. All right, well, that is um, that is setting up firewalls. We are now protected on our system, and uh, we should still be able to log in. So with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.